The HTC Droid DNA for Verizon Wireless has finally broken cover, and the 1080p display on this device is the first of its kind in the United States. But will all those extra pixels slow down its performance compared to a device with the same exact internals but a lower res screen, like, say, the LG Optimus G? Well, I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now. Let's find out. So let's talk a little about those nearly identical internals before we jump into a comparison. Both the Droid DNA and the LG Optimus G, the Sprint version here, feature the Qualcomm S4 Pro at their heart. That's backed up by an Adreno 320 GPU and 2 gigs of RAM in each case. The difference, as Joe Levi points out in a recent article, is that the Droid DNA's 1080p display has over 2 million pixels, compared to the Optimus G's 983,000. In theory, that means the DNA has to do a lot more work to render graphics than the Optimus G does, which means one could expect it to run a little bit slower. Does that hold true in real life? Well, without getting too scientific, let's jump into a few general comparisons in benchmarks, third-party app load times, stock app load times, and page load times in the browser. First up, just a quick run-through of benchmarks. We put the phones through our usual battery of tests, and the DNA came out on top in all of them. You can view these in tabular form at pocketnow.com, but quickly, just for the video here, the Quadrant Standard score for the Optimus G was 56.69, the DNA scored 78.44, and 2.2 Benchmark, 11.206, 14.514. Linpack Single Thread, 177.237, 191.838. Linpack Multi Thread, 434.708, 464.661. Smart Bench 2012, 4326, 4677, and finally Sun Spider 1385.0, 1148.3. Lower is better. But none of that means much to the average user, and truth be told, neither do app launch load times, if you put it in so many words. But users do like responsiveness, and when they tap on an app icon, they don't like to wait too long for that app to load. So, with that in mind, let's launch a few stock and third-party applications on each of these devices. Now, just FYI, both of these devices are freshly booted, so we're on as level a playing field as possible. That said, we're running different Android versions, 4.0.4 Ice Cream Sandwich on the Optimus G, and 4.1.1 Jelly Bean on the Droid DNA, and each with its own manufacturer's skin on top. So, from a software sense, this is a little apples to oranges, but... All these distinctions will exist on the retail shelves as well, so this is every bit a real-world comparison. First up, let's see if we can launch Maps. We like to know that our navigation resources are close at hand. One, two, three. Boom. There we go. Pretty identical launch on each. We get a pretty good fix on each. We haven't selected location source on the Optimus G, so that's why it didn't pinpoint us. But the application launch time is nearly identical. Next up is camera on the stock apps list. We want to make sure that we can get that special shot when the time arises. One, two, three. Boom. Pretty quick there. There's our HTC, or excuse me, our LG uh, uh, tutorial. But uh, camera app launches pretty quickly on each device, about a second on each. And finally, we're going to go ahead and launch the browser. One, two, three, boom. Both these devices are on the same Wi-Fi hotspot, so this is not a race as far as load time goes. This is just showing how quickly the browsers can render each individual page. And we do have scrolling ability on each, the DNA doing a little bit better as far as fluidity while the page is still not fully loaded. Let's do a little pinch-to-zoom check here. Optimus G showing that excellent performance we've come to expect from it. Just a little lag as it gets the last bits of the page loaded. Droid DNA. Definitely buttery smooth on the pinch. Double tap to column view. Very, very sharp text there, as you might expect from a display of this kind. And there's the text wrapping in action. As far as third-party apps, let's go ahead and just very briefly check out two popular games for Android. Jetpack Joyride first, one, two, three, boom. Here comes the launch. Droid DNA on top, Optimus G at the bottom. 
almost identical there. Let's go ahead and touch anywhere to play. We'll demonstrate that the Optimus G is, in fact, a capable device. Oh, can I do both of these at once? That'd be fun. Volume on the uh, on the uh, DNA a little bit higher. The display also a little bit brighter in this specific test, but that's not what we're here for. We're just checking performance. And I died. You, you want to be careful about dying. You don't want to do that in games. We'll go ahead and launch Angry Birds Star Wars to see if we can get that something uh, similar as far as load time there. Rovio Optimus G is a little bit ahead in this very quick test, but only by about a second. Here's our intro. Yes, indeed. And there's that action right there. And finally, a general usability test. If we go ahead and hop into the app launcher here, you can see that scrolling pages, a fairly fluid experience on both. Jelly Bean doing its job with the Project Butter improvements to make sure that is a smooth experience over there. We're going to hop into the download category. Just do some more of that. Let's see if we can get some widget action here. We press and hold on the HTC screen. There that is. It's loading the widgets. We scroll through the slightly more graphically complicated widget action. That's nice. Bring down the notification tray if we can. Apparently I have a notification. There's a notification tray up, down, very, very close to a one-to-one -one experience on each of these devices shortly after a fresh boot and a, a couple app launches. Uh, not a giant surprise, but just to demonstrate that both of these devices are at the top of their heap as far as performance goes in the UI sense. So while the Droid DNA is driving over twice as many pixels with the same hardware, we're not seeing much slowdown at all. In fact, in benchmarks and in general usability, it's equal to or better than the Optimus G in many respects. Not all. Despite Jelly Bean's optimizations, the DNA's UI isn't much smoother than the LG UI on the Optimus G running ICS, something we've noted before. We'll have to wait a little longer to fully judge the Droid DNA's performance in every usage scenario, Watch for our full review in the coming days, but out of the box, its software performance matches the LG Optimus G despite its higher res display. Considering the excellent marks we gave the Optimus G in our review, that looks to be great news for potential buyers of the new Droid DNA. That's going to do it for a quick and dirty comparison between the HTC Droid DNA and the LG Optimus G. A whole lot more coverage coming on the Droid DNA in the days ahead, including our full review. Stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter so you don't miss it. Pocket Now Tweets is the official account. Follow me on Twitter if you want. I'm at Captain Two Phones. Leave us a comment on the post at pocketnow.com. Throw us a thumbs up here on YouTube if you like the video. Stay tuned for a whole lot more coverage in the days, weeks, months ahead. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.